Okay. Um, good morning, and thank you for coming to my session. Uh, I'm Xiao Chen Han, also known as Sandrine Han, from the University of British Columbia. Today, I'm going to talk about virtual world and creativity from art education perspective. Uh, this presentation pre presents findings from an international collaboration project using a participatory observational case study from the perspective of creativity. In this research, high school students from both Vancouver, BC, and Phoenix, Arizona worked in the virtual world for uh, of research, virtual commons for education and research. Each group of students from these two areas constructed one ecosystem in research. There were two ecosystems created in total. However, due to the limitations of this research, the, this paper will focus on the findings that emerged from the Vancouver students. And the main research question of this paper is, how can the virtual world creation process foster students' creativity? The sub-questions are, first, how did the student express their creativity through the virtual world creation process? And second, what can teachers do to foster further students' creativity? The definition of creativity has changed through time, and many articles has discussed the history of creativity in art education in depth. Therefore, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel. Instead, I will focus on creativity in technology, creative uh, self-expression, responsibility, problem finding and solving, peer assistant learning, motivation and play, and creativity in schools. First, I would define what creativity means for this study. Um, according to Csikszentmihalyi, creativity results from the interaction among the group of gatekeepers who are entitled to select a novel idea or pr product for consideration. The domain or symbolic system of rules and procedures that define permissible action within its boundaries and the individuals who brings about some change in the domain. In Zitterman's uh, words, creativity is not only about self-expression. It's a complex process with relationship among people, process, product, and social and cultural context relevant to a domain of knowledge. Creativity is about problem finding, problem solving, diversion and convergent thinking, self-expression and adapt adaptability in new situations. For Friedman, creativity is first involved critical reflection. Second, it's based on interest. Third, it's a learning process. Fourth, it's functional. Fifth, it's a, a social activity to depend on reproduction. And seventh, it's a form of leadership. According to Marshall, there are three kinds of thinking. First, analytical thinking, second, associative thinking, and third, transformative thinking. Transformative thinking includes elaborating on something, revisit its constructing it, or translating it into another style, medium, or form. Using Daimler's uh, argument, creativity is not a gift. It can be strengthened and needed to nurture and exercise. About technology. Due to the advance of technology, digital technologies are changing what it means to create and what it promotes as culture innovation. For the researcher, this is uh, important to explore the innovative use and misuse of technology and it uncover the hidden possibility of, of technology. According to Blake and Browning, Technology develops student problem solving skills, video response, uh, video reasoning skills, and creative thought exploration and expression. Through the creative digital process, students transform something known into something previously unknown. By completing creative uh, digital assignments, students can become skilled at the effect tool while uh, gaining knowledge of ways in which to use the technology creatively. They can combine their past experience with new ideas and express themselves by learning new software. 
Through the process of technology digital creation, students can build up their self-esteem and may approach digital art education assignments more confidently. Brigham Browning also suggests that this is uh, not necessary for the teacher to know everything about software. Teachers need to be willing to learn from their students. About creative self-expression. According to Zimmerman, creative self-expression became um, dominant in the art education field in the late 1930s and in dominance late lasted for over 50 years. Creativity was regarded as being in innate and developing naturally without imposition of adult interventions. A teacher's role in a visual arts program was to provide motivation, support, resources, and supply, but not interfere directly in students' art making activity. Eisner agreed that arts are about expression. Arts helps human um, being um, discover their emotional selves. All art students are entitled to freely develop their own bodies of work become enlightened through critical thinking and creative art process, and be able to express their own creative reactions to the world about them. Responsibility. To be creative is to be useful to an individual or a group. In other words, creativity is not only about the individual, but how the individual creativity changes the field or domain. According to Steiner, uh, creative involves first force greater than ourselves, uh, second, attention to our willing, feeling, and thinking, third, a uh, balance of two impulses, an intuitive impulse from outer responsibilities and an imaginative impulse from inner sensibility. To conclude, creativity individuals are not only concerned with their own problems, but with social responsibility. Problem finding and solving. As many scholars underline, one of the most important elements of creativity is not only exploring novel ways of problem solving, but also considering innovative thinking on pro uh, problem finding within a particular culture context. According to Friedman, creativity in visual arts involves risk taking and requires courage to bring concepts and skills together to create new meaning to uh, persuade viewers to think differently or take action. Brian proposed five strategies to promote creative problem solving in art education, which include open-ended assignments, pre-production, mind map mapping, brainstorming, storyboarding, uh, inclusion of symbolism or metaphor, Peer conversations and critique. Chiksamahaya and Sayer um, present a method for problem discovery. They indicate seven uh, prerequisites to be met when problem finding. First, through knowledge of one or more symbolic domains. Second, through immersion in a field that practices the domain. Third, focus of attention on a problematic area or the domain. Fourth, ability to internalize information relevant to the problematic area. Fifth, ability to let the relevant information interact with information from other domains at a subconscious level where parallel processing takes place. Sixth, ability to recognize a new configuration emerging from this interaction that helps resolve the problematic situation. And seventh, evaluation and elaboration of the insight in ways that are understandable and valuable to the field. In short, the problem finding and solving process require having knowledge and immersion in a domain and paying attention to the problematic areas. Internalization, internalizing and interacting with relevant information to relate domains, recognizing a new situation and find evaluating uh, this situation, the solution. Peer assisted learning and group collaboration. 
Much research, research shows the importance of peer assisted learning and group collaboration during the creative process. Open creative forms of work and creative ideas forged within a small group of colleagues. As Zimmerman states, creativity is a complex process that can be viewed as an interactive system in which re relationship among persons, processes, products, and social and cultural contexts are the pro prominent importance. According to Brian, students like to ask each other for help, and collaboration empowers students in class. Moreover, peer-assisted learning provides a medium for divergent thinking, which is key to the creative thinking process. Intrinsic motivation. Researchers suggest that intrinsic motivation has strong relationship with creativity. In other words, self-directed learning is the key to creativity. Through self-directed learning, creative self-expression can be achieved. Zimmerman notes that uh, creativity should be focused on the child-centered and society-centered art education placed in a contemporary studio-centered practice. Research on intrinsic motivation addresses the creator's enjoyment of the work itself. According to Csikszentmihalyi and Wolf, people report the most positive experience and the greatest intrinsic motivation when they are operating in a situation of high opportunities for action challenges or high cap uh, cap capacities to act the skills. As Friedman states, when students are engaged through the, uh, their interests, learning is more effective. Play. Play exploration, curiosity, and innovation are linked behaviors. Uh, because play is about problem finding and solving divergent thinking and flexibility. For research uh, perspective, we are playing when we are making art. We construct and translate the world, uh, create new things, and take risks. Zimmerman notes that creativity can be approached through a pedagogy that honors students' open challenges, attitudes, and beliefs, confronts social norms, and at the same time, embraces uh, fun and play as important ingredients of self expression. Finally, Goody suggests that art teachers should provide students with opportunity to engage in creative play and encourage students to make observation of their inner experiences. Creativity in schools. Recent research indicates that creativity is observable, learnable, and can be taught. However, creativity can be troubling if it is important to help students understand making art means making trouble for previous ideas and images. As teachers should, uh, art teachers should, according to Zieberman, be knowledgeable about subject matter, communicating effectively, effectively, using directive teaching methods, making class interesting and challenging, and helping students become aware of context in which art is created and why they, uh, why they and others have needs to create art. For Goody, psychological safety and freedom foster creativity, and these are the are rooted in the trust of free, freedom of expression. Csikszentmihalyi and Wolf provide some suggestions for teachers to consider when fostering students' creativity. First, student curiosity and interest are the main sources of potential creativity. Second, potential creativity is enhanced by intrinsic motivation and surpassed by excessive reliance of extrinsic rewards. Third, activities need to be designed with the condition necessary for a flow in mind. Fourth, learning to uh, formulate problems should be part of the curriculum. Fifth, respecting uh, creative personality traits, and six, promoting the internalization of learning. These implications are based on in the le level of domain, where they ask first, how attractive 
is the information presented to students. Second, how accessible is the information? Third, integrated is it, uh, how integrated is the information? Fourth, are there opportunities for mentorship and uh, apprenticeship? Schools and teachers should ask first, is there funding that support the creative ideas? Second, how open are teachers to new ideas? Third, do teachers stimulate students' curiosity and interest? Fourth, can teachers distinguish good new ideas from bad ones? And are there ways of implementing student creativity in the school? Chiksa Mahai and Sayer also suggest that not filling the students with goal-directed, conscious, rational problem solving but allow time for unanticipated combination of ideas to be generated. Virtual world for education. Today, virtual world provide another habitat in which young people can live, play, create, and learn. Many educators use virtual worlds such as Second Life, Minecraft, and OpenSIM to engage learning. The use of organic virtual world as learning environment is no longer considered innovative in education. The use of organic virtual world as learning environment is no longer considered in innovative in education. Virtual worlds are the uh, nature extension of 2D uh, technologies. Residents can interact with other residents as they do in the real world. Virtual world are online communities in which residents can share their beliefs, create new innovations, and generate new ideas. As Hong states, realities by which we see ex existence are not really reality, but an intellectual creation. In virtual world of second life, active world, and open scene, Residents can create their own 3D avatars, build their own visual environment, and control their own virtual movement. The border of the real world can, and the virtual world is defined by the production, reproduction, and imagination of virtual world users. As Lakin states, the virtual world reminds us that we are not just an organism, we are organism constituted by our interaction with our environment. In and increasingly, those environments are artificial. When virtual worlds are connected as educational concepts, virtual world become not just the delivery system, but also learning spaces. This shift uh, presents a sharp contrast to much of the current practice by highlighting choice, decision making, and exploration as central uh, aspect of learning. Languages, international business, science, math, and art are all taught in virtual world. Learning activities in the virtual world allow students to interact with information from first-person perspective. However, as researchers state, meanings are embodied in practice. When compared with learning activities that use a mind-on approach, hands-on activity allow learners to uncover more layers of meaning from their conscious doing. As uh, trouble states, behavior change is caused by interaction in which external events support internal learning process within specifically defined environment. Okay, about this research, the research method I used was participatory case study. This research studying as an international collaboration project using a participatory observational case study from the perspective of creativity. In this research, high school students from both Vancouver, BC and Phoenix, Arizona <laughs> were in the virtual world of ESER, virtual comments for education and research. I use participatory case study as a research methodology. Darakis explained that a participatory observation as a multi-person, multi-method, multi-conceptual, and multi-dimensional. The methods include observation with field notes, semi-structured interviews, and initial survey. In this research, the researcher is the observer as well as the co-instructor uh, and assistant in the class. As Bogdan and Blaken uh, notes, 
uh, organizational studies typically are the following. A particular place in an organization, a specific group of people, and some activity of the school. This research focuses on the activity of specific high school students group who use an open simulator uh, virtual world to create 3D animated virtual ecosystem. OpenSea is open software that hosts a virtual world system and the content is created by its users. The participants in this study stated that the OpenSea is like a higher resolution of Minecraft. In OpenSea, users are able to create a more realistic world and as high school students, they truly enjoy this kind of realism. Survey, interview, and observation and, uh, and research notes, data collection and analysis. The purpose of the anonymous survey was to understand the participants' technology and gaming background. The researcher assumed the technology and gaming background might influence students' learning and creativity in the virtual world. There were 18 students who took the survey. Since there were not enough computers for all students to use at the same time, the survey was printed on paper. Students fill out the survey with pen and the research feed the survey result into the UVC survey software. The researcher also downloaded the survey result onto an Excel spreadsheet and coded in both survey software and Excel. There were 18 participating students and it was impossible to interview all participants in, the, in one class time. Therefore, the researcher provide anonymous open-ended interview questions on paper to each student and collecting their thoughts and reflection on this project. After the student read, uh, read the questions, they were given the choice to have a face-to-face -face interview or group interview with the researcher or answer the interview question with pen and paper. Two students choose to have a face-to-face -face interview with the researcher, and three students had a group interview with the researcher. All the interviews were uh, transcribed by the researcher and Excel coded and survey with survey and observational data. The researcher took photos of the class at work, snapshot of their virtual environment, and field notes while on site. So all the images that you are seeing were created by the high school student. The researcher also uh, wrote reflection notes after leaving the research site each day. All the notes were open coded and Excel coded uh, with survey and interview data. The research finding emerged from the data analysis. Limitation. This paper present the finding only from the Vancouver students. The project was originally designed as a comparative research. However, the participants of those two sites were too different from comparative uh, comparative research to be appropriate. The students from Arizona were six students from grade eight and nine in an after school program where each student had their own computer to use. The students from Vancouver were 20 students in grade 11 and 12 in a regular art class where they needed to share computers or work together in small groups when working in the virtual world. Students from these two sites did have the uh, chance to visit each other's virtual ecosystem while they were working in their own virtual world. The researcher were hoping to arrange meetings for students from these two sites. However, the times of the day when these students could work in the virtual world were very different. As a result, the two group of students were not able to meet. While the virtual world technology is able to provide an easy collaborative environment, the researcher, the research participants' environment and timing are always constrained of, of a collaborative research project. Participants. The participating students were grade 11 and 12 and all were in the same art class. There were 18 to 20 students in total of this nine le uh, lessons representing a variety of ethnic backgrounds. Uh, most of the participants had this 3D gaming experience. Uh, only one student had experience creating a game in CryEngine with 3D's Max software. 
Although there were 18 to 20 students working in this project in each class, the total number of classroom computer was eight. Two more computers were added to this number by students who brought their own computer from home. Therefore, because of the class had only 10 computers for 20 students, most of the time the students needed to work together. Because of this, um, there could be no more than 10 avatars in total working in virtual world at, at any one time. Students define an ecosystem as a community of living organisms in conjunction with the involving uh, components of their environment, non-living environment, things like water, air, soil, and minerals. Interacting as a system um, on their surveys. The students all had the same perception that an ecosystem including not only natural beings and environments, but also buildings, cars, and things made by humans. The student reached a consensus with the teacher that they would like to create a virtual ecosystem that would provide visitors with a feeling of Vancouver in the virtual world. Therefore, they carefully create a map representing the west end of Vancouver. The research took nine lessons to complete. The first lesson focused on the introducing the project and completing the student survey. And the second lesson focused on the discussion and brainstorming. It was not until the third lesson students really began to work on the project. Since it was a class project, the teacher needed to assign and or ask students to work on different tasks. Students were divided into group of this uh, task. Video reference, sound recording, mapping, gaming story design, and creation. Students in the creation group played and practiced in the sandbox before the mapping group was ready to release the map. When other students were done with their assignments, they created avatars. During lesson five through seven, students worked on their assigned tasks. During lesson eight, students were interviewed by the researcher. Lesson nine was the discussion day where the teacher and the researcher hosted a class discussion to conclude the project. The findings are divided into seven categories, which align with the literature review. Technology and creativity, creative self-expression, responsibility and contribution to the world, problem finding and problem solving, peer assistant learning and group collaboration, intrinsic motivation and play, and teacher involvement. For replying to the a survey question, what do you think an uh, ecosystem is? More than half of the students wrote an answer they found in Wikipedia. This suggests that most of students rely on technology to find answers before they try to think for themselves. The convenience of the finding easy answers through technology might encourage students from think, uh, dis discourage students from thinking creatively. The current project used uh, virtual world technology as the medium for collaborative student work. Most of the students enjoyed the process and wanted to participate in or use similar technology for future art projects. During the final class discussion, when asked if they learned something new in this project, all of the students agreed. This project aligned with earlier research in which students learn something previously unknown through creative digital processes. However, the student's conclusion might be only partially correct. That they say the knowledge they gained came from the experience of working with the technology. But many of the students did not learn any content knowledge about ecosystem prior to the final class discussion. That is to say, in this research, Technology remains as a tool or medium for students' work. The true learning of content knowledge still rely on teachers' guidance and class discussion. Creative self-expression. The project echoes a scholar's statement on creative self-expression. Not everyone in the classroom uh, feels uh, 
3D creation in OpenSCENE. However, everyone creates his or her own avatars. If you can see on the slide, the, those avatars are created by the student. Since the avatar creation did not influence the final result of the collaborative work, there was no adult intervention in this part of the project. Students were able to freely develop their avatars, immerse themselves in the creative process, and express their own creative reaction to the world about them. The research finding in this category can be divided into three subcategories. Experiment on their avatars. A boy created a very strange looking avatar at the and this become a fashion among the boys. Many boys change their avatar to look very strange. Some of them experiment with their strange avatar by adding female outfit to make them look more ab absurd. Change their avatar. From my observation, some boys were con concentrating on creating the wo world would suddenly shift their attention to change their avatar. The process might not take long and then they would return to working on the world creation again. No attach, not attached to their avatars. After I noticed uh, that many girls spend much time on making their avatar look good looking, and many boys were trying hard to make their avatar look special, I asked them if they were attached to their avatars. The students answer was no. There was just a game for them. Given the uh, finding, it is clear that the outlet of creative self-expression is very important in art education. It is the place for students to take risks, have fun, and experiment without worrying about the consequences. It is also an outlet for them to do something they can truly enjoy without ruining the final product. Working in the virtual world provides students with a feeling of achievement. The, uh, this echoes the literature that uh, asserts that to be creative is to be useful. Even though most of the students did not create objects from scratch, instead of reusing existing objects, they consider reusing objects to be uh, as important as creating new objects. They try to transform an existing world, the domain, into a new one. The project gives uh, social responsibility to the students, and most students try their best to fulfill this responsibility. In addition to their feeling of uh, contributing to the world, they also gain a feeling of achievement through the process. Problem solving and finding. Due to the nature of media, problem solving was one of the essential parts of this project. Thus, no student had used OpenSync prior to this project. Therefore, they all needed to learn how to use this software. However, neither the art teacher nor I provided any step-by-step -step instruction, and hardly any student asked for them. Um, color painted uh, hard copy handouts were provided, and electronic handouts were also available. However, none of these handouts were picked up or accessed. The students preferred to go through the problem solving process by themselves. Many students reported that one of the reasons they liked this project was because OpenSync is not too difficult to navigate and not, too, not easily boring. For my observation, it was obvious that students were trying different methods to solve problems themselves. This research finding also aligned up to Brian's five strategies to promote creative problem solving in art education. In this project, the um, building group was the group constantly trying to find different problems to solve. In the sandbox area where they, uh, their experiments would not influence the, their final product, they tried different methods to explore different aspects of the virtual world. This started from simple object creation and moved on to collaborative object creation. Some students spend more time exploring the possibility of capturing, some prefer to exploring animation in virtual world. Many of these texts were not required for the project and not noted in the lesson. 
However, students were curious about the possibility of a virtual world. Students also explored the possibility of virtual world in their avatar creation process. Through this project, the students developed knowledge, immersed themselves in experimentation, and paid attention to problematic areas. They also internalized and interacted with information relevant to related domains in order to recognize new solutions and evaluate the solutions. These processes pr parallel the problem-finding process possessed by Chitramahai and Sayer. Here assisted learning and group collaboration. This research found that collaboration might increase students' creativity. However, it might also distract from students' concentration. There were some students who preferred to work in groups. They help each other and learn from each other. There were three avatars, create and use by five students, working on building one car in the sandbox area. It was amazing how they discussed what to do and how to do it across several computers. This reflects Hooper's and uh, the researchers' points that creative, creative work is forged within a small group of colleagues. The boys on the sound team boy, uh, the, um, tried hard to teach a gir girl member or the team to use OpenSync to place a sound they recorded. The girl was not able to control the creation tool and two boys were trying very hard to help the girl. The time they spent teaching the girl was far more than what a teacher with a room full of students would be able to spend. As Brian states, students like to ask each other for help and collaboration empower the student in classes. Here, system learning provides the students with space and time to learn from each other. However, this research also showed that some students prefer to work alone and follow their individual plans for creation. In some cases, students uh, tried hard to focus on their task with other students distract them. Many students were assigned to a group that was not their first choice. The students were not motivated to do the required work. However, in the middle of work, working on assigned projects, some of these students shift their focus to a project they want to do. It was like they were taking a break and having a chance to enjoy their work. These self-motivated creations were creative and imaginative. However, due to the project deadline, the students were sometimes asked to return to their required group work. Another issue that emerged with a group collaboration is that it was almost impossible to uh, motivate the student in the game and story or story design team to create a game or story from for the environment. Because of the member were students with very different personalities and characteristics. Almost at the end of the project, two girls found suggested and uh, found suggested an idea that could be the game of the environment. They started to develop it without discussing it with the boys who did not want to pay attention to the design. Even though the girls were not able to complete their part of the assignment, they finally found an enjoyment in the project. Intrinsic motivation and play. As stated above, this research did not provide students step-by-step -step instruction. In this project, students learn was uh, self-directed. When I asked students uh, what was the best part of this project, all of, this, all of them answered the ability to create and contribute to the world. The students enjoyed the creation process and were, were proud of what they created. The students uh, thought the creation process provided the right amount of challenges for them to continue it instead of giving up, which allowed them to achieve the state of flow. The building group students were happy uh, build, uh, playing the sandbox area. They created many objects that could not be applied to the final project, but they enjoyed the process. 
This parallel the literature that play is about problem finding and solving, divergent thinking and flexibility. For the students who play with their avatars and were trying to see what they could do, they were engaged in creative play and interpretation and were encouraged to make observations about their inner experiences. Creativity in schools. Because this was a class project, the teacher articulated that he uh, envisioned this project as a representational painting made in 3D virtual world. Also, because this project was a class project, the teacher needed to assign the student to do different tasks. In class project, it is not always easy to foster the creativity that allow the psychological safety and freedom and the freedom of expression as Rudy suggested. The students who collaborated in the project expressed the hope to have a chance to future to create by themselves. They say it would be nice to create their own world and see what each, uh, each would want to be to or be able to do. The research findings show that due to the nature of school setting, it is not always easy to achieve the methods of fostering creative creativity suggested by the literature through the uh, class project. Suggestion and implications. I have few suggestions that equals the literature review. From the perspectives of technology and creativity, Deciding whether or not to allow students to use technology in art class is not easy. If an agreement can be reached, it may be that it's best to allow students to use technology for finding resources only after the brainstorming process. In this way, students will not be able to depend on the technology for ideas when they need to be exercising their creative mind. Not every art unit is focused on creative self-expression. However, this research finding shows the importance of creative self-expression. This important need may be addressed by allowing students to have a side project, may, maybe in a journal or um, sketchbook, where they can continuously explore their creative self-expression. In this research, students expressed that one of their motivation from making a contribution to the virtual world. It did not matter to them how they contribute, but they were proud that they could do something that impacts the large world. Therefore, it is important for students to feel that their personal contribution is part of the whole project. When given the opportunity to contribute, students may be willing to spend more time to give uh, giving their best effort to a project. Many art educators still believe that providing step-by-step -step instruction is the respons responsibility of the art teacher. However, the next generation might prefer finding their own problems and solving them by themselves. They might want to explore in depth some aspects of the project that are different from what the teacher had in mind. Helping students brainstorming ideas and explore their technical skills may also be one solution to fostering student creativity. Group, group collaboration can be very beneficial, but it can also be troublesome. It is hard to find a single good solution. In art class, especially during a class project, it is important to provide students with an environment or time to play. Since play is about problem finding and solving, divergent thinking and flexibility. Play helps students find the intrinsic motivation in a project. Finally, as the literature shows, creativity in school has uh, been widely discussed. But creativity in group work in, in school setting has not yet been explored. From the research findings, I'm not yet able to provide solid recommendations. However, this is an important topic that requires further research. According to Csikszentmihalyi and Wolf, the uh, future will require individuals who are able to formulate the new problems, come up with new solutions, and adapt readily to the new ideas of others. Much of this uh, training for a flexible, creative approach to information of schools. 
to succeed in this responsibility, we will need to motivate students to have curiosity, interest, and enjoyment of the activity in our classroom. Using the virtual world for art education provides an engaging environment in which students can explore their creativity. However, hey. more research is needed before we can provide solid solution for using virtual world to foster uh, creativity. That's all for my presentation today. I know there is so much information, but yeah. Um, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, please feel free to let me know. Um, my contact email is here. Um, thank you. I have a question. How did you improve the life of your students? Uh, excuse me, uh, how do I... Uh, I didn't hear the whole question. Could you please... How ask? did you improve the lives of your students? You mean improve the life of my students? Um, um, this is just a project in the art uh, class. Um, I was not trying to improve their life. So um, I I believe there are ways to do so, but um, this is not a focus. So I, I think a lot of uh, educators and researchers here have many, many answers to this very important question.